You know, on this episode of Back Trails, we're heading up north to Alaska. Reliving one of our most memorable hunts to date. Spotting and stalking Alaskan doll sheep. Well, where do we begin? Literally, I mean, it, we've been doing this for way too many years. Decades. I mean, be, before the TV, decades. we were doing the DVDs and the VHS. The video. It was VHS. Do you remember VHS? It was a long was, time like ago. You know, you, you have HD, 4K, HD, SD, high 8. I mean, we had some, we've gone through some stuff. Beta. You, we I mean, we, yeah, it's and you like, know what? Here's wow. the thing is we have so much content and so much footage that we've decided to share it with you. And the thing is, is that what we're doing on back trails. Yes. With the Sea Ants Rulos, because the Cianci there's Rulos. more than just us two now. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through some of our older hunts on back trails and share them with you almost seminar style. We're going to go over our old semi live, hunts, semi live and, um, just put in some little extra words in the same, would you say? The reality of it is, it starts right now. I know we can't convey this to y'all, that what's going through the feelings of being up here in Alaska, going out there, and I mean, is it, this, this is it. And I thank God that, you know, Vicki and I are able to share this, and we're also able to share it with you, and, and well, we're also gonna be sharing it with RJ, because he's here with us every single step of the way. Amen. He was three years old on this hunt. Now he's 21. Wow. <laughs> you remember this stuff, Vicki? John Wayne, baby. John and I are gonna have a little talk. Come here. Oh. Hey, John. He was like huge. Well, they gave you, hold, yeah, stop Stop it, okay, let's so pause listen, this. So listen, here's the deal. What? I'd only been on a horse once before in my life, before this hunt. And you remember what they did? They asked everybody, they said, right. you know, how many times have you ridden? You know guys, even if it's your first time, oh yeah, I've ridden a lot. I've only ridden a horse at that point once before and it was on an elk hunt. And now we're gonna take it into the mountains of Alaska. Crossing streams, and, glaciers, it and, was insane. And they gave Ralph the biggest horse. So should we continue? We should continue. <laughs> I'm a little dude. Don't squish me. <laughs> okay. Can we go to cross the creek? Hold on. You're beautiful. I love you. You don't even talk okay. to me like that. <laughs> but don't even try to pet me like that. No. How you doing, huh? Will you be very careful with me on your back, huh? I hope so. I don't know much about horses. I heard they said they don't like red. Thanks. I'll put my camouflage on. You won't even know I'm on you. Well, you'd be a good horsey for me, and maybe I'll save you some lunch. Oh, see? Lunch. Likes that idea. You were on the lunch. Now watch. Watch this. <laughs> Folks, that was Vicky's horse. If you remember on that trip, honestly. Your, your horse had issues. <laughs> It continually did that the entire trip. That is Vicky's horse. <laughs> I feel like that footage is from the 1970s. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't it look like it? That's oh that SD gosh. footage Remember again. Remember going down the first trail and then crossing this stuff? Oh my gosh. That was when we first saw our first sheep. Yep. And we're looking going, oh we are Lord. Late. Then we, yeah, remember this? I do remember this. At this point, it's day two of our 10 day yeah, doll was, sheep hunt. I couldn't tell you. Okay. And we got there and we were going up to go glass for sheep. And Brian and Amber, Just, we, we spotted these sheep in the bottom, in the river bottom. Literally, they were between both mountain ridges down in the valley. Yeah. They were level, eye level to us. We got sheep all the way up here on this side. If you've ever ever thought about sheep hunting. This is the place, baby. Remember them? And as we, actually, when we went close, remember we spotted a grizzly? Yep. Well, what do you think, they winded us? Or just caught something, a wind? Maybe, they, they do get nervous in the creek still.
This segment was brought to you by Bass Pro Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Brian spotted these two fabulous rams. And guess what? The one is sitting, he is perched. Look at this, this is sheep hunting. For anyone who's not sheep hunted, this is sheep hunting. And, and you know what happened here? Is that when we spotted the sheep there, when Brian spotted it, we went up after that. Yep. That's what we're heading up to do right now. And then the other one stayed down below so they could watch to see right. if the sheep ran down or what, instead of us climbing the whole way up. It was kind of, you know, hand signals, binos, see what's going on. So see, look at, you're going up. You've got extra arrows in your backpack, I see. I brought many. <laughs> Amber just signaled to Brian. The sheep went the other way. What are you gonna do? Man, there were grizzlies. Holy cow. So you were up for sheep first and I was up for bears yep. first. And so I had a grizzly tag and we I don't even know how many grizzlies we saw. We saw a pile of them. And they're and, mountain grizz. Yep, and the big thing is you've got to remember is it's an animal that don't, doesn't like human presence no. at all. So every time we'd, we'd you know, start to try to get a stalk on some sheep, it seemed like everywhere we went, the bears followed. We'd bump right into them. So every opportunity we had, unless we saw possibly a huntable sheep, yep. we went after the bears instead. Vicky, get your ear. It's a beautiful Now here, bear. you see Vicky, now when Vicky shot, her, she hit her left arm, the string hit it, threw the arrow way left, the bear spun, nothing. Ugh. Yep, well, he's out there somewhere. He went running and we might just cross his path. But that was the first time I ever shot a grizzly also. At a grizzly. At a grizzly, yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, that was. was crazy. It was pretty awesome. And everything that went on, and I mean, Amber had her gun ready. I mean, they have to. They have yeah, to be you, ready you have for to have it. backup. But he was a beautiful grizz. Ugh. There is a ram about a thousand yards straight up this way. He's Betty looking at us. You've probably seen this before too, and you, you, you put on the white cloaks and you, you know, you, a lot of times you, you get the opportunity to maybe keep moving. Um, he didn't like it. Like you just said, these are like painter suits. They're yep. like, yeah, they're you real go on, you put them on, they're like Tyvek suits. Even though we're wearing camouflage, when you're out there, the sheep, they're gonna see other white Moving images. object images, that was a good word for it. I was to say beings. It's a hard game, but so we've got these white suits on and you know, we'll see. Well, we finally got all the way up to where we needed to be and found out that none of them were legal. So see, it worked. It did. It did. <laughs> Ugh, glaciers. watching the two sheep, the two rams up there that we were gonna go dry stalking on. But there's two grizzlies on the same side that keep pushing the sheep higher. So we're gonna go put a stalk on the grizz. There's two of them though, so we gotta be careful.
You know, I don't know who's ever seen a grizzly in the wild, and I can tell you there is an aura about them. Well, you can even just see it in the footage, but when you're there in real life, oh. there's a thing. I mean, one of my favorite animals to hunt is bears, and I think it's part of that aura. And it doesn't matter if it's black bear or grizzly, but grizzly and brown bears, there's an adrenaline that you can't, the, yeah, there's, you, you can't explain it. You're talking about one of the ultimate predators. Absolutely. You're talking about one that literally back then and you know, before all this, if a grizzly, you know, new man was around, he was gone. As we keep them on the endangered species list and we have an overpopulation of them and we're having them move into towns. And we're encroaching on their and land. Absolutely. We're gonna have more and more issues as you see in the news and you know, you know, reading the newspapers. The reality of it is, is we have to manage all wildlife. And this was just a unique opportunity for us and a blessing for us to, to be in their home. Well, it's winding down and it's time to bring out the weapon that can reach out and touch something. Okay, so here's where it started. We weren't even sure how many days it was. I think it was near the 10 days. The closest we ever got with our bow was 120 yards. It didn't take a lot of convincing. No, I mean, this is a once in a lifetime trip that we went on together. Yes. And you know what? We hunted hard. And then finally it's like, you guys, Listen, we're gonna have to fly out in a day or two. We still have to ride the horses all the way back to base to yep. Shoshana. We've been seeing two legal rams for what, five oh days in a gosh. row? Two Except beauties. we couldn't get up on them. We put our hoits down and we took out our rifle. 270. Yes. The only problem is, is before we get out there to reach out and touch him, we gotta go up here. We've been watching these rams for, well, better than a week, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. We tried with archery equipment. And maybe we just ain't good enough. We, not these guys, us. But we just, uh, we got a long hike and a short time to get there. So hang on a second, that footage, the waterfall. We started hiking up, we saw where those two rams were at. And it was a drainage coming off the mountain. And the only way to get up it, cause on either side of it was shale. We had to climb up the waterfall and then we got up a little higher. Yep. And then we got to where we had actually spider crawl. Like you had the rifle on your back. I had a camera on my back. We didn't have another camera guy with nope. us. So there's no footage of us going between these rocks, trying not to fall back down. I mean, I can honestly tell you, at one point, Brian looked at us and he goes, listen, I'm telling you guys right now, this wasn't the right way to go up it. And that we just need to be very careful We'll see what we see when we get up to where we can see if they're still there and we'll see what happens. And I so. gotta tell you, you know, when you spend that kind of time in the wilderness, you really gotta hope and pray that you're with the right person. Brian was unbelievable. Everybody. Everybody and, was. They were all awesome. And we, you know, we took our time. And I mean, at the end of this, just the climb before we even saw the Rams, I can tell you everybody's hands were bleeding, knees were scratched up and bleeding, toes, your boots were torn apart because as you're going up there, this is mountain hunting. I hope it doesn't come across like we were complaining. No. We weren't, we just didn't know. Well, and we learned so much oh, on this trip, my gosh. on this hunt. I mean, what was we the biggest thing you learned climbing up? Remember, Brian? Okay, small hill, small steps. Small because, step, small climb. Because here's the thing: is if you get to the base of a mountain, or even just a base of a hill, and you look up and you go, "Oh my gosh, it's don't huge. let it I'm intimidate never gonna you." Never going to make it. You've already lost. Yep. The other thing I learned is you don't want to be the last person out of five climbing up a mountain because all those rocks that they're kicking down are hitting you in the head. Yep. Just Lip, nose, yeah. right above we my... We got pretty oh, beat yeah. up, but you yep. know what? It, well, we'll just let it play. Yes. The big one's on the left. He's looking right straight this way, which isn't good. He's got to go still bed it down. What if we just came over the top here? Just here? No. <sighs> You're gone. You like to set up. And like this whole trip, they're just avoiding us. They were bedded down 225 yards away. And when we came around, they're gone. We're gonna see what happens. This segment was brought to you by Browning, the best there is.
Now we didn't go far at all. We, we actually just went up another peak. They just went in a curve. The ridge, it was in crazy. A curve. And I mean, we're disappointed. We're thinking that's the end of the hunt. We're gonna start climbing down. And as soon as we get around the corner, we spot them and it happened really fast. And again, you have to be at your game. Now what we're doing is Brian's actually putting a backpack so I can yep. come up with the bear with the rifle, 270. If I remember, I was at 240 something. Yeah, it was 240 something. Did I hit him? Which one is he? The left. Bill. I think he did. Yeah, I think he got him. And then all of a sudden, look at this. And this is pretty common because of the steepness. You're gonna watch your animals say, sort of take that tumble. Yep. <laughs> so you got your sheep. Good oh. job. Congratulations. Right here, remember? Yes. Oh. But watch, listen, Brian. Hey, Vicky, you can get this other one. Hey, Vicky, Vicky, come here. Vicky. So seriously, what we did right here is we switched. Brian's like, Vicky, come on. You these can were the do two this. legal rams. The two we legal rams. And it's not the only legal ones, but no. those were the two that were were yes. like. Okay. So Ralph grabbed hold of the camera and I laid back down onto the backpack with the gun. Come on, come on. There's, there's another bullet in there. How ironic. You got your Hoyt archery shirt on. Yeah. Look it at happens. this. happens. Look at what these animals, look at this. I can't even imagine trying to climb what these sheep do. I can't. I really can't. You got him, Vic? I got him, blood you got him, honey! Oh well, and then... <laughs> we lost it! <laughs> Listen... <laughs> and I hope you understand, that is no disrespect to the animals. Absolutely at all. not. Absolutely not. That was a nine to 10 days of climbing, hiking, being wet, being cold, not sleeping, losing horses, yes. getting them to come back. Just Everything you can imagine that could go on was going on, which is a normal wilderness hunt. Again, yes. not complaining. The adrenaline, everything of us getting up to the top of that mountain. At one point climbing up to that point, I truly believed that our son RJ, who was three at the time, was actually gonna be an orphan. This excitement after we just doubled in a matter of a couple minutes on doll rams doll sheep and here's the crazy the thing to understand about the two rams we were married 11 and a half years when this happened those rams were 11 and a half years old right mine is double broomed and yep. yours is a single broom the reality of it is is like we've always said is when god gives you your day it's mm -hmm. your day absolutely that was our one of ours we stopped all the way up from the flipping bottom for <laughs> It is now seven o'clock. We've been climbing since four four o'clock, four thirty. They moved the first bed. We finally found them. We've been hunting these rams for heck, what is it, five six days now. Yes. We've been seeing them. We just can never get on them. And I've never shot an animal with a rifle. That's my first rifle. What an animal! I just shot a animal. doll sheep with a rifle. Let me tell you something. In a matter of two minutes, Vicky and I shot two beautiful, unbelievable gorgeous doll sheep and i don't care we've always said it before we'd be hypocrites if we didn't say it now we don't care with what you hunt as long as we're sportsmen and women we all need to stick together and yes i don't even have my camo on you you know you may think well yeah they used a gun and everything else this was a trip of a lifetime for us and for someone who may not think we did the right thing well you can judge us the way you want folks that was your own doll sheep hunt. <laughs> i i just Honey, to share it with you, man. Oh. Congratulations, honey. Oh. You know, we don't know what to say. When you sit beside a magnificent, well, two magnificent animals like this, you just, uh, throw them off. I know this sounds nuts, but this is something I've waited a long time for. I'm going with Terry Overly up in his little cub. I've been swallowing Dramamines and what else, Vic? 
What are they called? Bonini or something. Bonini, something. I'm not supposed to make That's my Italian version of Bonine. So here's the thing. This is our first trip to Alaska, both of us. Right. So this is one thing Ralph wanted to do. He wanted been a to dream. fly up in a cub. A super cub. A super cub. With tundra tires. And, and just go see the mountains and the terrain. And once we were done hunting and we got back to main camp, Terry took you up in that plane and... It was like for me winning the lotto. If you've never done it, you have to go experience. You know, this has been a long time ago and it still takes my breath away to see it and to watch it. And I hope you guys understand for us to share it with you because, you know, it doesn't mean that much if we can't share it with you. And that's what back trails is literally all about. Whether it's us, RJ, whoever it is. We're excited about this. We can't wait to share with you more because I'm telling you what, we got years and years. I mean, look at the gray. I mean, we're, we're definitely getting old, you know? And wow. some things never change, you know? We're still who we are. And, that's it. Uh, we can't wait We've to- We've never changed. And here's the thing, we wanna thank all of you for supporting us all these years because without all of you and without him above, none of this is possible. Absolutely. So thank you guys for joining us on our first Back Trails episode. Can't wait we to share more. We have a lot more. more to come your way, so have a great day. God bless you. Peace out. Closed captions brought to you by Wounded Warrior Outdoors, providing wounded service men and women with therapeutic outdoor adventures.